What's up everybody? My name is Ryan Krause and you're watching the Crucible Coachworks YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about what annealing is and why it's important, especially with aluminum. Now, here I have two scrap pieces of aluminum. It's 6061 T6. Uh, it's not the best for shaping and it's also pretty brittle. Now I can also, I can make this shapeable with annealing. Uh, annealing is the process in which you heat up the metal and then let it naturally cool so it kind of restructures itself and removes any stresses and makes it less brittle. This is important with aluminum because as you work it, it'll become hardened. And in this case, if you start with an already kind of hard material, it'll bring it back to a zero hardness, hopefully, if you can do it right. Now, today I'm gonna show you my process for doing it, which involves not soot, which people normally use with the oxyacetylene torch, but instead a Sharpie. And in this case, I'm gonna be using a Milwaukee Inksol because the Milwaukee Inksols are my favorite Sharpies or permanent markers that are on the market. So without any further ado, let me just show you how I do it. So as I had just mentioned, there are different ways to anneal aluminum. Um, the most popular way and the most traditional way is to take the oxyacetylene torch and just turn on the acetylene and acetylene. The most traditional way is to use the acetylene torch and to get a very sooty flame and just dance it over the panel. And then you just burn that soot off and that's how you know that you've annealed it. Now, I prefer not to do it that way because I've been burned <laughs> pun intended, too many times doing that. And I found it actually a quicker way that works for me. So what I do is I take my Sharpie or permanent marker. This is a Milwaukee ink solve as I previously mentioned. And what I do is I just kind of scribble over the panel lightly like this. And make sure I get, especially the edges, so I can make sure that I can see where it's been annealed. Now what's gonna happen is when I take the torch over it and I dance across it, I will see that the marker itself will burn off. And when that marker burns off to nothing or almost nothing, then I know that I've reached the heating point that I needed to reach to make sure this anneals properly. If I overdo it, it'll turn brown and crystally, and I, it's, it will be non-salvageable. If I underdo it, it's the safer side, but then it's not fully annealed and it'll be too brittle to shape. So I'm gonna go grab the torch here and I'm gonna show you what happens. All right, so I got my oxyacetylene torch here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack open the acetylene. For those who aren't familiar with an oxyacetylene torch, it's acetylene and oxygen. Crack open the acetylene. Get a nice flame going, and then I'm gonna kick on the oxygen here. Torch is a little dirty, so it's carrying on a little bit. I don't want it too hot. Oh, there you go, I popped it. Start over here. Kick my torch on. Add some oxygen. So once I got a good balance here that I'm happy with, about like this, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to take my torch and I'm gonna be going to begin dancing over this panel at a nice distance that isn't going to stay in one point. I don't wanna stay in one point, I wanna spread out the heat and just warm up the panel. You'll probably see as I begin to put some more heat into this panel that it'll start to dance on top of the table as it kind of warps around as the heat causes the material to expand and contract. You'll see that the marker begins to disappear. And it becomes like a ghosted line. That's how I know that I've got enough heat in the panel. And you have a little bit more back here just to make sure it's fully gone. There we go. And I'm just gonna walk across the panel. That's how I prefer to do it. I prefer to take my heat and go from one end to the other, not spread it out to the point that I'm bouncing around to every corner and then going to the center. I think that's inefficient since aluminum is such a great heat conductor Makes sense to just kind of follow it. There we go. Now my panel, panel should be fully annealed. So I'll go ahead, I'll shut off my oxygen first, then my acetylene. So now I'm gonna wait until this panel naturally cools to ambient temperature. I don't wanna force cool it. If I force cool it, it'll become brittle again as it, I would be forcing the molecules back together and it would become hardened. So I'm gonna let this, this cool to uh, ambient temperature, which shouldn't take very long It's a small panel. Um, I'll actually move it from where it's sitting so it's not a warm spot on the table and we'll revisit it here in a couple minutes. Now in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead, oops, that's the wrong panel. Ouch. So in the meantime, while we're waiting for that panel to cool, let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you what happens if you were to try to shape 
a non-annealed aluminum panel that is slightly hardened. Let's go over to the brake and I'll just see if it even tips over. Now I'm willing to bet that if I try to break an edge into this panel, that it will crack. And if it doesn't, if I try to adjust it anywhere after that first break, it for sure will crack. It, it will, as I break it, it will begin to work harden as it is and it's already slightly hardened. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a bend in this. Let's go for like a past 90 bend. And let's take a look at it. See if the camera will focus on that or not. Focus. So as you can see, when I bent it there, it began to crack. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. See those cracks there? That's because it is too hard and brittle to be bent. Now, you would not want that in your final product if you were making a panel for a customer or for yourself because, you know, it, it, it's been compromised. That panel was no longer good. You would not be able to repair that. You would have to cut that out and... Uh, redo it. I mean, you could try annealing it and welding it to repair it, but I think that you would have a very hard time doing that. Now let's see what will happen if I break that panel once it's cooled. Now while this panel is cooling, I want to be sure that I stress enough that you do not force cool this panel. If you were to force cool it, again, you would kind of undo the annealing process that you just went through. So do not force cool it. In fact, by Standard, I would say you should not force cool most any metal that you're shaping because you're going to work hard in it and it'll become more brittle. Now, I know that when you're shrinking panels, um, say you have a high spot that's oil canning on a door skin or something like that, and you need to get that oil canning out and often you can use a torch to heat it up and you can quench it with water to cause it to shrink. That does work and it's okay, but just keep in mind that you will be causing that panel to become more brittle. So if you wanted to work it afterwards, it may, it, it may crumble on you, honestly, it may crack. You can, however, shrink a panel by heating it up and using like, you know, um, you could use a shrinking disc or you could still use a torch to heat it up. And if you were to let it naturally cool, it will still shrink, but it will take longer, but remain stronger. Now I'm not a metallurgist, so I'm sure there's metallurgists out there that have more input on that. And that's great, you can drop it in the comments, but this is the basics that I know that I'm going to pass along to you that works for me personally. So this may not work the same for you, but I consider that like a general law metal shaping for myself. Um, I do sometimes quench, heat and quench things to shrink them, uh, but it's like my last line of defense that I don't prefer to go to up front. Looks like our panel is cool to the touch. So let's go over and bend it and see how it does. I'm going to go ahead and do pretty much the same bend we just did on that previous panel. Um, this is the one that we annealed. And it matched the same bend angle, about the same speed. We're just gonna run it straight up through here. Pop it loose. And let's see how it looks. Zoom in here. Look at that. Focus, there we go. You can see that it still had some stress marks, but it did not crack like the last panel did. Um, now with aluminum, especially of this gauge, I wouldn't recommend making a break that tight in general, especially with what alloy this aluminum is. It's not very friendly to shaping, but as you can see, annealing it really, really improved the quality of that bend. See on the inside here, I would say that it survived. Nice. Now that is just one test I could do to prove to you why annealing is important with aluminum. There's more things that we could do, like showing how quickly an annealed panel will shape as opposed to a non-annealed panel how quickly they'll stretch, how quickly they'll shrink, um, how much more malleable it will be. But I think that's a pretty good basic scenario of why you would anneal aluminum and a very extreme amount of stress that you could put on a panel to show, again, why annealing is important. So drop in the comments what you would use annealed aluminum for in your projects. And if this helps you out or not, let me know. This is the Sharpie technique is something I kind of figured out on accident. Uh, Chris Rungi and I were actually, I was doing a one-on-one with him 
and we were annealing aluminum, and we found that when we made marks on the panels that the Sharpie would disappear, and we were like, huh, that makes sense. And then since then, I've seen online that other people have figured out the same thing as well. So I'm, I can't claim that this is my own solution, but this is what works best for me. So again, drop in the comments what works for you, and this is, if this helps you out at all. Otherwise, have a nice day, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Later.